something called a placebo protocol. This is a formal seven-point evaluation of the vasculature. So the first position that we use to evaluate the central veins is the mid position of the neck. Okay, this is right in the sternocleidomastoid muscle between the heads. This is position number one. Let your head relax. Turn your chin up. Position number one, we can see a nice internal jugular vein. It's almost triangular. We see the carotid artery. And we can see the thyroid gland. That's, that's position number one. We can see that the internal jugular vein is um, anterior and lateral to the carotid artery, the normal position. This is the way you would stick if you a um, jugular vein um, in the mid position. From position one to the supraclavicular region, again, we're in the, between the heads of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And here we can see the jugular vein and we can see, um, deep to the jugular vein, we can see the subclavian artery. This is an implant puncture of the jugular vein. You can see the whole shaft of the needle. And we'll demonstrate three that three later. Control is in location two. You angle into the mediastinum and watch the internal jugular vein become the brachiocephalic vein. Get the clip on. Okay, so here's the internal jugular vein. When you angle into the mediastinum, you can see it, the jugular vein, turn into the large brachiocephalic vein, and you can see the, um, the pleura, and you can see the sternoclavicular joint, you can see the pleura, so it's, he's got a um, brachiocephalic vein, and then we're going to see the subclavian vein, hopefully coming into the, into the brachiocephalic. This is a brachiocephalic puncture. I like this for dialysis catheters and the large catheters. Four is when you're in position two and three, you slide laterally in the sub in the supraclavicular area, and here you can see the subclavian artery in cross section here, and the subclavian vein in longitudinal section. You have a nice look at the subclavian artery, and you can see the external jugular vein up up here. And we can try to follow that down as it joins the subclavian vein right before it becomes the brachiocephalus. Position five of the seven, we take the ultrasound probe and we put it in the deltal pectoral groove marked by the dashed line into position five. We, we put it and we're going to be across the vein. Here we can see the axillary artery and inferior to that is the axillary vein. And we see the cephalic vein entering into the axillary vein. So this is position number five. We can see relationship of the axillary vein to the underlying pleura. And this patient has about a centimeter of tissue between the axillary vein and the pleura. So for position number six, we would take the probe that's in the deltal pectoral groove and turn it 90 degrees so now we're parallel to the course of the vein. Okay, here we can see the axillary vein in longitudinal section. We're gonna try to follow that until maybe it joins up. So we know we're getting close to the brachiocephalic. And we can see the valve at the um, base of the um, subclavian vein. So we know, we, we, and there's a sternal shaft for the longitudinal line coming down. The needle coming down. So you can see the needle coming through the tissue toward the longitudinal axillary vein. So I like this technique a lot. I like the other one. The cephalad, we'll see a nice look at an artery. For position number seven, we're going to take the ultrasound probe and put it parallel to the sternum in the upper chest. And we're going to look for the sliding lung sign that demonstrates normal pleurodynamics, particularly that you have not caused a pneumothorax during the procedure. So we prefer to look at this before the procedure and after the procedure. Take a nice deep breath. Good. You see nice sliding. 